So we're here today in Broadmeadows at Bright Plants. Bright Plants with Adrian from EcoStream Water Management. We'll tag all his inform information below the video and on the audio. Adrian's been kind enough to let us uh, come and have a look at what they're doing here and we've also had a really good chat. Hope you enjoy. So it's it, you, it's you. Yep. It's a business. You've got a partnership. So I've got a, a, a partnership, and um, and of course, when you start a partnership, people are like, "Oh, you got to be careful." You I'm be one careful. of them. I'm, and, I'm and, like, <sighs> yeah. Um, I did my apprenticeship with Richard originally. Okay. And we had a really um, good relationship, and um, we both had. After I stopped working for him, I, I then went out did did some um, things with some other companies for a little while. Learned a ton of stuff. Um, and then went and started my own business. And I was pretty much a one-man show for a couple of years. In irrigation or plumbing? A in irrigation, yep. yeah. Um, and I really love just being around people, talking, yep. um, just enjoy relationship. And so that was a bit isolating, really, for, for quite a while to, yeah. to have. And then I moved, my wife and I and the kids moved um, from the Dandenong to the Mornington Peninsula. And um, what I didn't know was Richard had also moved with his family down there. And uh, and we ran into each other. Well, so you hadn't seen him for a, a oh, period? We, yeah, for, for a couple of years. Yeah. And, um, and we ran into each other and got chatting and he had a job coming up that he needed some help on. So yeah. I, I went and, and I, vice versa, I used him. And then we started toying with the idea over about a year of we yeah. subbed to one another. Of uh, of trying to actually go into partnership, so we tested it for a year first. I've seen it. I work a lot in Adelaide, where two guys will work together, but they still own their own part, like in sole trading business, and they'll just invoice back and forth mm. for their hours, or it kind of balances out. So you tried that style we first. We tried it and then... for it for a year or so, and then um, we had some. We dreamed a bit bigger than that, and thought we well, can't keep that model. Yeah. It's a bit confusing for customers. Um, yeah, true. We want to present a united. It's kind front. of that half pregnant, like yeah. You kind of yeah. If you're going to go out there and try and target those high end clients, you want them to know that you're serious about it, and it's not just like yeah, we're not sure either, but use yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And so, um, and to really become a proper legitimate business, we needed to to really come under the one banner and to be a company and to be a company. Yep. And um, so we got a branding, it was really, so Richard did have a business beforehand called Eco Water and my business was Extreme Water Solutions. Okay, yeah, so. And we got, and that was like a first joke, oh, we should just combine them. And then when we got a branding person to come in and uh, and she was awesome and um, and we kind of went right around with a whole of different names and we kind of came back to Eco Street. And paid her multi-thousands of dollars yeah. to tell you that That's the right. idea you had first was the yes. good idea. <laughs> but she, she bought a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah. She helped us to focus into the world we wanted to be in at that stage yeah. and um, what to brand to. And So what her business was core was a branding marketing company? Yeah, we were her first client. Okay. Uh, and so she really put a lot of work. We got real bang for our buck with it because yeah. she put all the effort into it, yeah. I, I can get that. I remember the first irrigation design and quote <coughs> that I did when I started Water Pro. Mm. It was to the metre, man. Like, I reckon they said that the main line they had left over was like a piece that they could have just put in the, the backpack and bring it back to the yeah. shop. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I measured everything because it was... It's, you've got a lot more time. Not that we don't have a lot of time now. Yeah. <laughs> We've got more people now. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so the part you created a partnership Yep. I'm guessing that you guys have quite well-defined roles. One of the things yeah. that I understand from my experience with partnerships is, is that if you don't kind of make it clear at the start, it can yep. be dirty yeah. because you both have different expectations around yeah. each other. So Richard, um, the, the reason it works is because Richard um, is uh, quite happy to sit in the looking over projects area, um, the hydraulics, the design, he's an irrigation designer, he's yep. pretty highly qualified as well. Um, and he's really happy for me to take the business where I feel it needs to go. Yeah, okay, so you can be the, I guess, the CEO and he can be the COO if you want yes. to look at it like that. Yeah, and yeah. we're starting to come to the point three years down the track of actually properly defining the roles. Yep. Um, because we've been able to, as we've got staff, so there's, there's seven staff, including Richard and I in the business. Yep. That's a good number. We've started, we've, we've been able to start giving some staff staff some of those responsibilities yep. it's take a little while to get there but we've got a really brilliant team um 
just fun. Everyone loves coming to work. Um, I hear you, man. We've got a, and it's taken some time to get to that point, but um, yeah, I really love the staff we have on, and and uh, if you ask them, I believe they'd say they love working yeah, here as well. Yeah, and yeah, your modesty is the only thing stopping you from saying that that's guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. The um, so <laughs> what, have you had any challenges? I guess going from that two to seven for me, I find that I mean we've got around twelve, including me now. And I guess that policy and procedure side of things tends to be the weakness for our business because mm. we've just grown so quickly <coughs> and it's always been the direct, like you, you, you just kind of do it and then mm. you expect everyone else to learn as yeah. well. But Yeah. Scaling has been a, um, a bit of an issue because everything's in my head and Richard's head. Yeah. Uh, and so we're, and you know, the policies and procedures thing, it's really... You know, in a way, it's really easy. If you want to comply, buy it. you can buy it. <laughs> yeah. And, but we truly are, we're at a point now and, and there's a lot happening. When we're sitting down now, right now is probably, you know, it feels like we're at just this point right now, we're doing so much to improve So not the business. most ideal time. Oh, I, was, I thought you meant it's like you're being busy. I'm like, no, no, not no. the most ideal time to sit down with me for an hour. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. I'm not talking project yeah. level, although we're busy but with But you're that. in a good purple happy kind of yep. company. Yep. So we're working on, for example, policy, policies and procedures. We're now building everyone from scratch. So rather than just buying them to comply, yep. you're building them because for best you care. Practice. Yeah, because you for want best it to. Practice. Yeah, yeah. Which is meant to rethinking everything. Mm. Um, and so um, in the way I, I estimate, because I'm trying to build it, so um, I still want to be involved in this business, but I want to be able to hand everything I do to someone else. Yeah. And so when it comes to costing, there's a bunch of things, um, you know. How do I how do I get everything that's in my mind? Like, for example, why would I charge more for a job? Yep. Well, I charge based on based on risk. I think yep. anyone would. Yep. If you've got a job that's miles away from where you work, yep. you naturally, I'm not given any. Or the conditions of the access to the site. So if it's if you can only work six hours a day, but you have to drive two hours each yes. way, and there's yeah. So of course those ones. I'm not giving away anything. No, se- no secrets no. here. Anyone would charge. But more your for that. your instinct or your thought process around that, you need to ver- like get it out yeah. and put it on paper yeah. so that someone else. So can. one thing that we've done is I've created with we've got um, a business coach and mentor that I use. Yep. Um, with her help, we've created a risk matrix. Yep. And so that gives us a number. And that legit, like, as in, a, I'd love to see that. So yeah. I, I, it's, it's just a number. So you've got, so this is the risk. Falls between this, and number this, is the and number. this number, this is the risk, this yep. is the number. Yep, we've got about 12 points at the moment. Yeah, and that'll and, obviously be an elastic document. It's, yep. you know, something yes. will happen, you go, oh, shit, we didn't. Yeah. Yep. So, but that is the best way. It may not be the way to go. There might be some but it's your falling way over yeah. in it, but um, this is something we're trialing, going, okay, well, can I get someone else to price based on these 12 different risks that yep. we have? And then you try that for six months, and maybe you price a job, they price a job, and you see yeah. how yeah. what your old instinct does <coughs> and what their new matrix does. Yeah. You'll probably find you make more money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, so it's, uh, so that's, like I said, we had to rethink everything. Yeah. Um, and how do I give my staff a bit more permission? Um, so, like, is there a number on you can buy anything under this? Yes. You so that was that was another policy and procedure we bought into place recently. Yep. Um, I shouldn't say we bought into place. We're about to bring it into place because yep. it's just all happened. Yep. Um, and so now there's a dollar value that they're allowed to spend without asking me. Yep. Which and, which is funny, but it'll save you that money. Yeah. Because I, I I think it was Tim Ferriss in the Four Hour Work Week talked about that with his um. He had like an offshore company that were doing distribution of his things and the, whenever there was a complaint, it, they'd ring him and email him and he said, look, anything under 100 US dollars, just give it to them, like whatever it is, because yeah. it's not worth my time having this conversation and it keeps the brand, I mean, it'd be the same with your guys, if it's a tool that they need to do the job, provided they haven't lost the same tool 10 yeah. times and you've got mm-hmm. an issue with the staff member, just go buy the tool that you need <coughs> to do the job. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, that's been, it's a lot of this stuff's bringing some freedom for me to focus on the things that I really want to be in. And I'm, look, I'm, I really enjoy being in the irrigation industry, yep. but there's parts that I don't want to do, that so I don't like dealing with. What's your ideal job? Talking yeah. to people? So talking to people, being involved in, um, in sales, um, and also being involved in the projects, um, helping to create, uh, how we're going to carry them out. Yep. So, so like really, a strategy, strategy around the projects we've. And um, so building the Gantt chart, sitting down with the guys, asking them how they reckon we should build it and then sort of coming up with a solution. Yep. 
um, that little bit of time at the start makes all the difference. And it seems it's so simple. Like I'm not like I said, there's nothing new here, but yep. it, it really is um, simple. The less um, we really found that the projects where we hadn't put the planning in at the start, or there was some unknowns, mm. they're the ones that um, weren't as successful. Um, yeah, it's like that measure twice, cut once, or yeah. Yep. What was the one that I was telling you, DK? Like two is one, and one is none. Yeah. Like whenever we carry, a, we don't have two cameras, and we probably should, we probably will at one point. But we don't carry two cameras, but you know that was from that was from Tim Ferriss as well. Like the Navy SEALs, two is one, and one is none. Like mm. always have a spare because you're you're gonna need it, and if you don't, then you're screwed. And I think preparing, like you're saying, you'd be you probably wouldn't be surprised that all of the people you compete with probably are struggling with the same. Yeah. Like they're not preparing, they're not doing because it. it's rushed, and then they're going, mm. oh, we'll, we'll just get started on site and we'll deal with the Gantt chart later, or yeah. we'll just get started on site and we'll deal with that later, and then, then you never do. Yeah. Um, I think you're a lot like me. I'm the same. In I, I enjoy the the process of the business and the like the the strategy and the meetings and all that, but I don't want to do the estimating. I don't want to do the the like pricing matrices. I want to say mm. this is the, what I think we should do, and then have someone else. Yeah. And. There's nothing wrong with that. Like that's yeah. that's great. And I'm at that point now. You know, we've got th that's that your next five staff. I feel like I've got now that I've got that many. Mm. I can be that guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that will challenge out as a partnership. If yeah. you because if you both want kind of like strap jobs, but if he's if he's really loving, he's rich. Sits really well in the design yeah. world, and um, that's where he finds heaps of excitement. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> um, I don't get it. So, but it's, but that's why it works well. Yeah. And what it comes down to, of course, there's been along the way differences of opinion and stuff. But the one thing that we've got is trust yep. between us. Yep. Like um, that's one hundred percent. I I trust Rich and he trusts yeah. me. And um, no matter what else we think, and yep. and um, well, that's it's yeah. like any like relationship with one on one, like a marriage. You know, you're never going to agree about how you bring up the kids or even what you're going to have for dinner. But you, that trust, I think communication yeah. and trust. Yeah. You know, if you can yeah. if you can tell them that you're not happy and they can go, well, I hear you, but we're doing it anyway, or, yeah. you know, and that you trust them. Yeah. So what, I guess um, you've, he takes care of design. You got, what's the core business at the moment, irrigation predominantly? Yeah, so it's, it's irrigation. We're probably doing around oh, probably 30% domestic. Yep. Maybe twenty percent these like this style of project, which yep. I was just telling you about with the drainage and stuff. Um, we built a pretty big water feature recently, which was a pretty exciting job to be involved in. Um, I'm laughing because that was my my intention when I first started Water Pro. It was going to be a water feature company. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, another okay. story. So <laughs> this was a pretty major water feature, yep. and um, and the rest would be um, commercial irrigation. The bulk of what we do is design. What do you want to be doing the most of? Um, I, where's your sweet spot? Yeah, we're still trying to find it to be completely yeah. honest. But um, uh, I like being involved in projects that have a little bit of quirkiness yeah. to them. So the water feature some, would have been exciting. The water feature was exciting. Yeah. It's pretty stressful. Yeah, there were some pretty really stressful parts to it. But um, we've found that um, we've taken the most pride when there's something a little bit different or a challenge that we've been able to um come up a solution for yep. um, where someone was being told, a customer was being told, no, it can't, can't be done. Well, can't like be this done. is obviously, you mentioned outside yeah. that yeah. you're only one of two that quoted from the 10. From the 10, yeah. You um, know, but everyone, I guess, I don't know how buoyant the Victorian market is in the, in your world at the moment and, and if things are good because they're good or if, they're, or if you're doing well because it's because of you. I have the same, I don't yeah. know, if, you know, in Adelaide, I'm like, are we good or is the market good? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where you we don't sit outside, either. Don't look over the fence, you just... Yeah, look forward and do what you're doing. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not. I, I don't know. The most look and really, um, what I see, if I can uh, run a business where I can work pretty normal hours and I can get home and be with the kids and um, I don't have to take over the world here. So that's just, your. You, you're. You're not. It's not becoming this much dollars. It's. It's finding what like a. Just a, a balance, balance, a really good balance where I can go to something the kids have on yep. or go out for lunch with my wife or yep. um, uh, this is, a and um, be involved in the lives of my friends and and uh, uh, catch up with mentors during the week. I've got a bunch of business mentors I see, but I've also just got a bunch of guys who are older, 60s, 70s, 
who um, can sit down with me and they just bring everything a bit back into perspective. They pull me into a bigger story than just eco stream. Yeah, I get that. We, um, I had a business coach for probably five years and I, I remember we obviously we spoke about this when we saw each other in Sydney, the, the mentor side of things. I think that it, it truly works when it's not a paid thing mm. and when it's actually people that um, have made made it in whatever capacity that they believe is making it and if they're happy yeah. in their personal life financially and spiritually and family wise and then want to give something back to someone that they see that they kind of they like or they're like this 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 kid reminds me of me i want to throw mm. him some advice if you haven't paid no. for any mentorship no only point. only a business consultant where yeah. they're not really operating as mentors it's that's more, more yeah accounting style yeah a consultant yeah um uh but no i don't pay the mentors yep. and they're pretty it's amazing how available they're making themselves to me yeah um and like you feel what not guilty but like yeah oh like they they they're chasing me down yeah and um and yeah they want to see you do well they want to see yeah they want to see me do well and they want to see a um a balance there in um in my life where i'm not going to destroy my marriage or like something. you become the richest single guy in melbourne kind of thing like yeah, yeah it doesn't um, it doesn't work does it they don't want to they you know in a way they're sort of chasing after me personally just to go you know <laughs> we can see where you were and all of these guys have got stories where yeah. they nearly lost something yeah. big because yeah. of the way they were chasing business and they're all driven guys yeah. they're they all were driven guys at yeah. some stage yep yeah. and um and some uh, one of them that I see, um, he at, at one stage did lose everything in terms of marriage, yep. finances, houses, everything, and he's come back from that. Yeah, and, uh, and that'd be such a cool thing to watch. I know that he probably thinks, Jesus <laughs> Christ, you don't want to be anywhere near it, but imagine yeah. like the climb. And yeah, watch it, what like having a camera with you yeah. for that? Yeah, like, so. I'm, I'm not going to get broke to, to, to prove it, but. <laughs> Um, and and I'd ask myself, okay, during the stressful times, like, and even, actually, before I go into that, even um, uh, in a way, and he wouldn't this he wouldn't say that he's mentoring me, but um, in a way, my my old boss Chris Logan, who's got yep. Think Water Melbourne, yep. um, he we chat about stuff, and I you know, at one stage I asked him, all right, I've done this for three years, tell me I'd do it for the next forty because. Um, this is like pretty hard work. Yeah, and and he he freely gave up some pretty good advice. Yeah, and um, and it was pretty amazing to um, to hear that uh, from Chris and for him to, you know, essentially we're c- competitors. Yeah, but um, even him, he's he's now in his mid sixties, and uh, and he is just like you know what, yeah, maybe forty years ago I would have um said no, nah, I don't don't want anything to do do with you, but. He was. He had some concern for me and said, "Oh, Adrian, you need to consider this stuff." Yep. So that was quite amazing. To amazing that you were told that firstly, because if you hadn't been told, then you wouldn't know. But what the fact that he was willing to share information with a competitor—it's yeah. funny, man. I mean, we've got competitors obviously all around the country, but in South Australia, and there's some that you'd happily help, mm. and there's others that you'd be like, mm. "I want to watch yeah. you burn," <laughs> but. For their for your own reasons, yeah. and obviously, if you've got a, a good relationship with this guy, I mean, yeah. we've got relationships with some of our competitors where if they need something, you know, sometimes they'll run yeah. out of a, a, some drip tube or they'll, they'll need a sprinkler for a job, and yeah. we've got the only ones in the country or the state. Then yeah, cool. Yeah, but if it's some of them, it's just like yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. So the mentor you you were about to go down oh. the line of talking about one of the other mentors. Yeah, um, I've probably um, lost my thoughts. So so these guys. I mean, how do you come across, the, obviously, to have that many people in your life? You're, you're either asking the universe for these people or they're finding you or they're family yeah. friends or... So I've got... Um, yeah, yeah, so we're, look, we are involved in a... Um, my wife and I are involved in a local um, church. My wife is a, a minister of a, a, a children's pastor of a church. And um, one of the... I, I went along to this church for the first time and it's just a church of Christ, nothing too out of the ordinary. Yeah. It's um, and, uh, and this one guy, um, he... Um, he came up to me and um, we got chatting. He goes, what do you do? And pretty normal first yeah. question. And I said, I've got a business. He goes, I've got a bunch of guys who have a business group and um, yeah. and you should come along to it. Yeah. And we meet one Friday a month. And so I went there. There was about 30 people, yeah. extremely successful people. Like yeah. I couldn't believe I was in amongst them, to be honest. Yeah. And they, w- they were trying to, 
I guess as a group, they were trying to work out where they sit with faith and business yep. and money. Yep. Some like of them had the, publicly listed businesses. Yeah, like what's right. our what's our liability towards our faith? Like, should yeah. we be supporting it more or less? Or how driven should we be? Yeah. And yeah. and, and most of the st- and and most of the time, like we'd get there and and they'd be talking about how to handle stress or worry or something like that. Yep. And um, and so that's how it came across the bulk of these guys. Yep. And um, which kind of removes the like, what's in it for them question? Yeah. Because whenever something like that comes up, I'm like, yeah, what do you want? Yeah. But obviously, if you've met them in a in an environment like that, yes, you're right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> do you want us to pause while you fix your camera? <laughs> no, that's right. If you've met them in an environment like that, you know that they're actually good people. Yeah. They're they're, yeah. they're trying to help you for. I guess selfless reasons. Yeah, um, and and I've been careful to not just go down that business mentor road. Yeah. To also get to balance it out because you're like other... ridiculously educated, but you're not actually doing any business. All you're doing is yeah. meeting with mentors all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and so to also um, talk to some other guys out of the. So there's there's really two main mentors I see out of that that group. Um, and there's one other ideal I, I see out of the, the um, business world yep. who do we just More like a life. family yep. stuff. Like, and, and that's a similar situation though. Yep. It's not paid. Yep. We just catch up. Yeah. Um, it's cool. It's, it's, I think, I guess, as we become you know, into our 30s and we're both <clears throat> quite similar in age, um, you kind of start to separate a little bit from the, the, the high school friends that you may have had. And then you've, you've got some kids. And then especially if you're a business owner... Um, and a male business owner, especially. I mean, I will probably get dragged through a sexist rant for this, but um, it, it's fun, it's hard to find your place in the world because you're trying to be, you know, you're trying to kill it there, and you're trying to kill it there, and you want to support your family, and you want to support your, you want to make sure your business is, is successful, and you're trying to find people around you. You know, you're trying to lift up the average of the, I guess, the people that you spend the most time with to ensure that you're being the very best you can be. Yeah. And so you're almost like out there hunting for a new a new herd or a new a group of, yeah. You know, well, um, it was sort of a, like as, as when I started the business, I was really driven. Like yep. I wanted, you know, we did. We wanted to grab everything. We wanted to grab whatever opportunity it was. Three years down the track, I, I now realise that opportunity wasn't the, ever the problem. No. And as I've calmed down a little bit on chasing all the opportunity, the right one seemed to be coming to us. Yep. Um, and uh, what's quite amazing, as as like I said, um, it's almost like people prefer to deal with someone who's not so driven, and um, and focusing more on the outcome for the customer. So, so rather than the sale, really focusing on what they're re- really trying to chase. You know, I found that I guess we've done a similar thing, and that we call it our value structure. So we've got these values that we adhere to, and if 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 that if dealing if the client doesn't fit inside the structure of values then we say no to them and I, th- I find that when the market finds out that we have that and that we want to deal with them they go okay this they, they're not just taking anything that comes in the door they have a strict guidelines around who they want to deal with and we fit that that's good and uh, it's helped us i guess reduce the amount of bad debt that we have the stresses that our staff have um you know the expectations are clear at the start like if you act like this we're not going to deal with you Mm. so i guess what you're saying is kind of a similar thing but you're saying opportunity more than yeah client avatar in a way well and what and we've got to a point with a lot of our clients especially the ones our repeat clients is um where i can have really great conversation out of project stuff and that's what i that's what i was saying before i just love being involved with people yeah, and the right um, people, the right people, and meeting with people and catching up and chatting and mm. seeing where they're sitting in their personal lives and and yeah. uh, and you know and there's been you know there's been times where it certainly moves away from business and and I can speak into someone's life who's got who comes to me and says they've got, they've got this issue and yeah. um and we can be pretty transparent with each other and yeah. um there's been some times where on projects, um, uh, in fact, I had one recently where we we uh, we made a mistake under quoting a um, a section of a project, yep. um, 
and we we've we're, we're wearing it yep. um but i've just been able to talk to the business owner and say look you just need to understand the next time and this was all really friendly conversation yep. that i can't charge that because um we oh, actually made yes. a mistake. so if the, yeah if, you, if, if the project was mirrored again next yes. week it's not yes. going to be the same yep. per meter or per square meter cost and this was just the zoning this i made it i actually made the mistake in a um what i was going to charge for new customer contributions i don't know if they've got this in south australia but um, in some of the new areas, um, if you need to put a new water tapping on a site, you got to pay the water authority a new customer contribution. So, as in the site's already got a water meter? Doesn't yet. Okay. So, there's, a, just... there's a water main running past yeah, yeah. the site, yep. and um, and you need to ring up the water authority and say, we need a water meter here, and they go, oh, okay, new customer, yeah. you need to pay this amount for that site. I'd assume we'd have that. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't, can't see them doing um, it for nothing. But... And we made a mistake where that um, City of West Water have got... Um, multiple zones where they say, all right, if you're in this zone, the new customer co contribution fee will this be this amount. Yep. If you're in another, it'll be this amount. Yep. And we fell within a zone by about a kilometre on a big area. Yep. So we, we we thought we were going to be in the $670 zone yep. and we ended up in the $2,500 mm. zone. But you, and that's for a 20 mil tapping. Jesus. If you want a 32, you if you, we, we needed a 32 mil. Yeah. So you times that by three. So they, so they say if it's your new customer contribution, <laughs> if it's a 25 is two times that. So two, two, 20 is one, 25 is two, two. 32 30 is three, three. So 40 46. Is four. Jeez. Um, 50 is 10. And then it goes per site like they just... Then you just give them one of your kids. And <laughs> Jesus. That, could, and this is a meter. This is that's the crazy thing. This is a meter that's used to measure the water that they're selling yeah. to the client. So that's right. And... Like I said, this was just a, and it's part of a a, a much bigger project. Yeah. It's, it can be worn, yeah. but it's you know essentially made a six thousand dollars. It sucks big time. Well, I was saying to DK um, on the plane here that I like I like people that I guess are like us, and some people just get it, and some people don't. And I think the reason you and I get along well is because you just get it, because mm. that you. It's a mistake, but in the interest of moving forward, you just fix it. Yeah. And we've yeah. got a lot of suppliers who are like would have would be like, sorry. Yeah. That's your fault. That's your problem now. I'm like, no, you made a mistake. Let's you fix it. Yeah. You know, whether it be a courier charge or a, you know, a, I mean, Rainbird are a good one for giving warranty on product that aren't isn't shouldn't really be warranty, mm -hmm. just in the interest of the relationship, the, the brand maintaining its yeah. brand and the relationship maintaining its relationship. So, um, so where do you get? Do you, do you tender for most of your work? Are you in that kind of market now, or is uh, it a lot of it's relationship based? We tender for a little bit. Um, we don't do a whole lot of public tenders. So you're not out there chasing. You're not on tenders. What is it? Tenders. Victoria? Oh, I am. I'm on them. Yeah. I, I'm waiting to see if something really interesting yep. comes up. But I tend not to go for the. If a parkland came out and they were after irrigation probably wouldn't go for it now because of the competitive nature of it yeah. or it's just not work that you want to be doing well competitive nature and the amount that i've got the amount of work i have to put in the tendering process yeah. just doesn't seem to pay off yep um we have so there's companies in victoria that have 50 staff or 100 staff that they've they're got structured four probably not just... that big but they're structured properly to be able to take on yep. to that type of because work. they've got a person that takes care of the tender a person that takes care of the rollout a person that takes care of yep. that yeah whereas yep. that's all you that's all me at the moment um and um, so, whereas being in a bit, so part of what we do is large scale domestic projects. Yep. Um, so what what's large scale, like above a thousand square meter block or are you talking like yeah. five acre? Oh, yeah, so it goes, so we can do anywhere from a thousand square meters and, and I think um, we've on domestic site gone up to about five acres. Yep. Um, which is pretty decent inst installation. Well, <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about near where you live. Um, yeah, in that so area on the peninsula yeah so um, there's some hobby farm yep. you know because obviously we don't know I don't know Victoria that well yeah. and part of the reason that I'm coming here and meeting yeah. guys like you is to try and understand more about the yeah. market so, so the peninsula has certainly got that um, people with some acreage um, seems to be a lot of people retiring to the peninsula yep. and they had a really beautiful property in um, Melbourne somewhere yep. uh, in the inner eastern suburbs and they've moving to the peninsula and they've bought an acre and they want that beautiful garden on the peninsula yeah and um and so that's been the peninsula has been a really great space to be operating a business in mm. um <clears throat> so that's in the domestic world um and <clears throat> in the commercial um world we're finding that um 
developing the relationships. So mainly in that world, we're not operating as a principal contractor. Yep. We're, we're coming in as a subcontractor to a landscape or a builder. Which is the reality of your yep. place in the market, isn't it? Yep. You, yeah. Yep. Um, oh, so but, you just have to make sure you've got good relationships with what landscape architects, not even... The, well, the, the, the landscapers. Land, like, landscapers. So, and, and we've got some brilliant relationships with landscapers and yep. we know the people we want to work for. Yep. And... Um, and they've got our back and, and we've got theirs. So yeah. it's been a really great building on those relationships. And a, the, a lot of the work is really good work. Some of it's high end and some of it's not. Um, I'm not so interested in chasing high end work. Is that, um, because, is that because you don't, well, why don't you want to chase? Uh, I find that people get really competitive when something's prestigious. And you, yeah, they'll win it because and, they want it not in the price. Yeah, will, yeah. I, I get that. And there'll be jobs. I mean, we've got jobs. There's some jobs that I want that are geographically desirable because they're next door to a competitor. Yeah. And that then becomes, you know, very competitive because yeah. it's just interesting for me to supply next <laughs> to a competitor. But yeah, so they're, they're going, okay, well, we're working on this street, which is now the most famous street in Melbourne. Yeah. So they'll get it. They'll drop their price. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't make sense. If I understand MC, it. Let's but say I think if the MCG came up to re yeah, yeah. everyone would go for it and... Someone would install it for next to nothing to... Well, the irrigation um, supplier would probably give them the stuff for free. Yeah. Because they want to have the MCG yeah. as a rainbird track yeah. or a Toro track or... A, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and I think that happens and I try to sort of steer clear of all the politics. I don't know. Well, Adelaide Oval just got redone and I'm sure it was competitive. With, uh, that was a Victorian company that won it. Okay. So how's that? Yeah, okay. So they came over and installed it. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. that's... And we've, we've definitely got the... <clears throat> the people to do it so that might have been one of those situations where they've gone we want that yeah we want that feather in our cap yeah and you're not going to what do you do and there seems to be some companies that are now really just specializing in sports fields mm -hmm. um be interesting to see with the women's afl if if a, i've got a feeling it's like another 30 ovals become i think there's a i don't know if it's a plan there's been a bit of rumor i read i read in one of the papers that that's what's being planned about 90 new sports fields over the next five years well they're going to need to get a grade I don't know what your standard is over here. They've got obviously standards in states around, you know, the grass and how, you mm -hmm. know, the Clegg, Clegg meter, you know, they like ram it and yeah. Yeah. test how soft it is. And if they're going to have these high profile players, men or women playing on those grounds, they're going to have to have it at that standard, yeah. which means irrigation and drainage. And yeah. And, and I mean, then they're getting really at the, um, they're using sports field consultants and, yeah. and, and all that because they're brand new builds. Um, so perhaps we'll be involved in that. At this this point in time, we've just found that sports field world too competitive. So. You, you, yeah, and you'll find that, as with anything, the, the, it'll be competitive and then a couple of them will disappear because they won't make any money because times will become lean and then you'll still be there. And then who knows, in five to seven years, you might only be doing sports fields because the market's up here again yeah. and they just want it done by yeah. someone that can do it properly. So, so we're, we're just willing to just ride the wave about where we sort of, you know, where we go and but remaining pretty open-minded yep. about it. I'm excited to go down a bunch of different avenues. But again, like you said before, opportunity's never been the issue. Yeah. You want to make sure that you're, you're making the right decisions. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. That family side of things, I mean, I've pu quite publicly said that, you know, I want to build a water to quite a big company. And the, the only thing that will, res there's two things that will restrict me. One will be my health. Um, and the other one will be family at some point when, you know, a 10-year-old or an 8-year-old turns around and says, who are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. see you anymore. Yeah. So. And so that's, I mean, that's one thing that, that some one of the mentors said to me was like, just um, just be careful with that. Because a lot of blokes say, oh, I'm doing this for my family. But if, yeah, if in 20 years time, you're not, they never You're doing saw. it to feed your ego. That's yeah. what I'm doing. It. Yeah. My family have got what they need. Yeah. I could go get a job. Um, I, and I'm straight up. It's not even about the money for what I'm doing. Mine's all ego. Mine's just to have the biggest one. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to win. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I guess I've, I've never played sport much as a kid. I didn't, you know, I grew up just with a um, single mum and I you know, had custody visits with my dad, but I couldn't really do sport. And when I did, I wasn't great at it. Like, mm. you know, I was always going to be like, a C grade anything. Yeah, yeah. So for me, business is like the game that I know how to play. Mm. And if I'm going to play it, I might as yeah. well be all in. Do it well. So, but then yeah. I've also, you know, I'm very, very active dad. So 
it's hard. Which you know you mentioned before about having quality relationships with your friends. Yeah, that's what's had to suffer for me. Yeah, is that you know Celeste will be like, we're gonna go do this. I'm like, I just can't. Like, mm. you know, mm. you know, we've got a small window of time with the kids. At, like as in Saturday and Sunday, mm. that's our time. We've got to do this, but I might yeah. have to work Sunday or Celeste's back working three days a week. So then I'll pick up. I've got the young ones from childcare on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So I'm doing it, but then I'm like. Is my action are my actions matching my ambition? Because I'm saying I want a hundred million dollar a year company. I don't realistically. It'd be interesting to see if I can build it balanced. Mm. That'll be the challenge mm. to go. I did it, and I only did it forty five hours a week. Yeah, like, I don't know, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's and and I guess that's why I'm I'm at this stage when the kids are young. I'm. That's why I've just tried to step back a little bit because. Um, yeah, the temptation that I could that I could get pulled into a place where I'm really driven again, um, you know, it, it is a real temptation. It is it is something that would that's an ego thing and a pride thing. Mm. Um, but I'm I'm just trying to hold off and go. You know what? Maybe this is the decade in, in my third thirties yep. of spending time with the kids and building the most brilliant relationships. Foundation. You imagine the foundation. A, a, a you can strong build. foundation, a solid yep. foundation. Yep. To maybe in my forties, yep, just kids a bit older, change gears and off you change go. Change gears a little bit. We have got a solid base to build on. Yeah, so, and it's that's just a matter of patience and and, and waiting and uh, and it's so hard though. Eh? Oh, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's hard. Um, so um, and look, I've got a bunch of guys that we meet with. Um, every second Thursday, we meet up for it. We cup of beers and and that, and we just press into a bunch of things. Yep. Four of us yep. into each other's what's going on in each other's worlds and um they they're not in business those other three guys um but we we sort of just doing life together is that something that's i don't know this is i know the answer to the question already it's you don't have an agenda for that but it's kind of like you're not just catching up and throwing some bets on the dogs and having a no, beer like that you no. actually are talking about we're talking about this. yeah so yeah. We, we are we are 100 percent pressing in to, to support each other to support each other yeah so how did that come about like is it something that you just all started doing i or? started doing it with them um I, I asked them i guess to to um be involved in walking closely together with one another sort yeah. of pushing beyond what normal aussie just standard bloke bloke relationships yeah because it's I, I, like as you're telling it to me i'm like that's such a good idea like yeah i should do that because yeah. i'm I struggle to find those connections in yeah. in my organic world. Yeah. So I think I have to actually go out and, you know. We And we're at a point now, we've been doing this for a fair while now, and probably around about a year and a half. And I, I wish I could remember the quote, and I don't want to sound like one of these wankers that brings quotes out. <laughs> and I'm going to. I'm going to when I say it. But, I'm one of those wankers, but, don't worry about it. But this is, this is something that we've been living by. Mm. And um, the, at... at goes something along the lines of find like-minded kings, yep. create treaties, and when they go to war, you go to war. Yeah. And so we've gone to war for a couple of these guys. Yep. And that looks like... Um, I'm getting shivers down my yeah. spine. I'm getting shivers. <laughs> it's, but it's so cool. And like uh, one of the questions that I ask in our podcast is, is there a quote or mantra you live by? So yeah. I, I, I guess I open it up and give people permission to throw their, yeah. their douchey quotes out. But yeah. that's great. Like... Because it's true, yeah. you know. And when I mean, I think I've got those those treaties with a lot of my friends, mm. but they're not. We don't. It's not formalized. It's not like like let's help each other. Let's grow together. And yeah. I think that's one thing that um, churches are great for mm. um, is that everyone wants to see the whole community grow. Yeah. And so they'll yeah. help each other first. And obviously, yeah. if you've then kind of got a whether or not it's church or not, but you've got a kind of more pointed crew, yeah. Yeah. your gang <laughs> that you can go. We've been you know, really. Um, careful about not could be completely inclusive in this group yeah like it's been about it's just you guys it's just us yeah yeah and well um, then how because it's like then how, how do they get to benefit it, it'd be like yeah. having a partnership now and then you're adding a third partner and yeah. with no financial buy-in yeah you're yeah. going well hang on what about the things that what we've built now yeah you know yeah so it seems really really selfish and in in that but you have world to be in and way. in that world that we're look in the the christian world that i'm operating in there yeah. um that's sort of like a no, no. You meant to be really inclusive, but but we've decided to, to be what more end pointed. Though? Inclusive that's to right. your demise. That's right. So that's that's why we decided with this particular group. Yeah. It's it's us four. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I, I believe that um, 
you know, the lives of some of those guys guys have been saved through that, through that group. Yeah, that's you know, and what I mean by saved is like um, uh, relationships, yep. um, marriage, finances, everything has been saved. Because men don't talk about this shit. No. They just no. bottle it up, either deal with it by drinking or taking drugs yeah. or being a delinquent or they just hold it in and yeah. stress it out and die. <laughs> like there's yeah. no, yeah. There's, it's not, it's not an accepted thing for men to go, hey, I need help yeah. um, in society. And it's getting better. And obviously, mm. there's a lot of help there for people, you know, with regards to, um, I guess, charities and associations. But to be able to then go facilitate that, yeah. you know, especially yeah. if you're the one potentially at, like right now, if you're the one with the strongest shoulders yeah. and you grab three more and go, let's be a group. Yeah. Because at some point, I'm not going to be the one with the strongest shoulders and I'm yeah. going to need you to hold me up for a bit. Like yeah. it's, you know... And look, these guys that the, we were we were meeting together with the um, with uh, the guys and the girls, so they're yeah. all um, most of them married. Um, and then we were meeting for about three years like that, and quite deliberately like that. And then we decided to break off. They, the girls meet as well yep. on the alternate Thursdays. Yep. Oh, of course. So then the kids are covered. Yeah, you get one on one time with your kids. Their Thursdays look really different to ours. Yep. they go out for dinner and go watch movies and stuff. Yeah, um, and that's more just like time away from life yeah yep. yeah and yep. that works really well for the girls yep. but and, you uh, guys are all you're more we're a bit more serious about it no no, no please don't <laughs> <laughs> no they're really serious about it oh god <laughs> Mrs. <Miss> Walsh <laughs> um, I'm just sorry I keep looking at my phone it's just because I'm conscious of the time that we've yeah, got in the room okay. yeah so um, no but that's that's been really great and then then probably once once a month well, once every two but months. who's to say what's right and you know we talked about parenting before and um, and you know saying you know you're doing it for your kids um, it's I think it's really important to also remember that it's okay to be selfish but just remember that it's not like if you say it's for the kids make sure it's for the kids yeah but you need to be partially selfish in that as well and that, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to everyone but you know your selfishness becomes selflessness because you're now powerful enough to to help other people because you've let yourself have that one hour massage or that yeah. whatever like whatever yeah. it is that that two hours with with that yeah. with your do you have a name what's like that the four kings or something? no no we don't have a name <laughs> the four we kings. don't have a name we don't have a name so maybe no i don't think we'll call it we'll keep it but <laughs> the, um, <laughs> maybe um, that's but yeah next yeah. time i'll see you i'll ask you <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.